this video, we're going to discuss quasi-hyperbolic discounting. Uh, let's start with two games. Uh, first game is that uh, you get you have two choices. Either you get 100 today, or you get 100 in the next year. Okay. In the next game, game two, you either get 100 in six years, or you get 200 in seven years. Uh, pause a minute and think which one you're going to choose. For most, com for most people, they will choose A in the first game and probably choose B in the second game. Now, let's first uh, discuss why this is not working out for the classical exponential discounting theory, which is the stuff that you will learn in uh, Econ 101 or basic finance. Let's say you have a discount rate of delta. Now the utility of getting $100 today is 100 Let's say you have a $1 per, a $1 per utility unit, and you get $200 times uh, the present value will be 1 minus delta, this is a discount factor. So in game 2, you get 100, the net present value, the same, you calculate the discount factor, and you calculate the discount factor here. So now let's take a look at the delta utility, which is 100 minus 100, 1 minus delta. Here is that I uh, extract the common factor, which is 1 minus delta to the fifth power. And here will be. Okay, so let's see. Now, if you choose option 1 in game. In, in option A in game one, that means this value is larger than zero. So by the same token, this has to be larger than zero. And our delta, let's say, is from zero to one. For any normal people, that would be the case. And this will be larger than zero as well. So U2 is also larger than zero. So that means you should choose A in game two as well. So that is exactly why exponential discounting or classical discounting theory does not work out. Now, what is what does uh, quasi quasi hyperbolic discounting tells us? Now, it's basically we still have the delta. Now we're going to introduce a factor beta. So what does that mean? Factor beta discounts all future period uh, with uh, with a constant. So today, no discounting for delta, no discounting for beta. Tomorrow, you got a discounting from delta, as you would do in exponential uh, discounting, and you got a discounting from beta, which is unique to the quasi uh, hyperbolic. Now here, you get. this from uh, classical discounting, and you get this from hyperbolic, quasi-hyperbolic discounting. Here, same thing. All future periods will discount by beta. Now, so let's look at the difference. So now the U1 is 100 minus. Delta U2 is again sub extract the common factor. Oh, sorry. Let's say for reasonable people, this should not be larger than this should be smaller than zero. The reason is that if this is larger than zero, then delta has to be larger than 0 0.05 which is crazy because usually discount rate is about 3% or 5% top. 
and here we're discounting at 50%, which is just absolutely nuts. So for normal people, this should be a value that is smaller than zero. You would much prefer uh, $200 in next period. This is larger than zero, and let's assume beta is also between zero and one because it is kind of like a discounting factor. So now your U2 is smaller than zero. So you can success successfully explain why you would choose B rather than A in game two. Now let's go back to game one. Uh, let's say we gave the discount value 0.01. Why not? 0.01. So now this part is now 180. So if the beta is smaller enough, let's say beta is 0.05. Why not? So now this is 90 and you will get U1 that is larger than zero. So now you can successfully explain why uh, you will choose A in game one. So this is a little bit cheating in that, so basically what you do is for all through the period, you exactly uh, keep the utility in, intact basically, but in the f only in the first period, and com when compared to the current uh, value, you punish it by, a be by beta, which is the feature of the quasi-hyperbolic uh, discounting. Although it's a little bit cheating, but I will say this is a very elegant framework uh, that built on the previous uh, classical model and is capable of explaining the experiment. It's also uh, very good at explaining real-time data as well. Uh, so if you're interested, you can read uh, Jesse Shapiro's work on the full step. So now let's move to another feature of the hyperbolic discounting, which is what I would call regret, or as literature would call reversal. What does that mean? So let's focus on game one. Utility of choice A and the utility of choice B. Now, okay, let's compare the choice utility of today and the utility of next year. Okay, so utility today you got a hundred, and utility tomorrow you got two hundred one minus delta times beta. Now let's say delta is equal to 0 0.1, beta equals to 0.5. So this value works out to 90, just as we got before. And 100 is larger than 90, you make a rational choice of taking up the 100 bucks today. Now if the time moves to next year, and you're standing at the next year and you're looking back, if you take the value, I'm going to take a dollar today, uh, and you put it in a bank, you got $110. You take the money, make a choice B, you'll get 200 bucks in next year. When you're standing in next year, you will say, oh gee, I made a terrible choice because now I actually prefer choice B to choice A. Notice that under hyperbolic, quantity hyperbolic discounting, your preference, your preference structure is not changed you still have the same uh, discounting mechanism today and next year. However, depending on when you are, your optimal choice actually change. So you actually have a reversal of your op optimal choice. So basically, in human, in normal people, human language is when you make a rational choice today and you review that rational choice uh, in the next, sometime in the future, you will regret it rationally. So uh, that is quite bad. Uh, and that actually have, I think if you think about your life, you'll find that a lot of situations that you actually do silly things like that. And uh, you probably want to think about policy implication uh, that if actually people do have a hyperbolic discounting uh, preference and uh, they will do something, they will do something regretful uh, to themselves and how we can use policy to help them 
not making those mistakes.